die laatste karikie graf, plaats hy 14 tot 18. Die drama is hier Eiffel Vilgaard geskryf, hy is in 1932 gebore, hy is al most acclaimed playwright, you will probably know Totsi, that this movie won an Oscar in 2005, he wrote Totsi. And he was also known, but to a lesser degree, as an actor. He had small roles in The Killing Fields and Gandhi. He was born uh, in Port Elizabeth. His mom was Afrikaans speaking and his dad English speaking. He calls himself Afrikaner who writes in English. He went to the University of Cape Town, but he dropped out and worked on a ship where he was exposed to the, the world overseas. He also worked as a clerk of the court, and during his days as a clerk of clerk, he became very aware of the plight of black people during the days of apartheid. The inhumane way that black people were treated, and also the injustices. So his plays deal with that issue and so his characters are also always multicultural and they are round characters. We see their good and their bad. They, they're not flat characters or one-dimensional. The play Die Laaste Karikie Graf was his first Afrikaans play and he wrote this on request of his mother, his Afrikaans-speaking mother. She asked him to write an Afrikaans play uh, before she dies. And then this was the result, the last, the Kariki Graf. He wrote this with a co-author, Rihanna Stein, who is an anthropologist. We'll talk about that a bit later. This is the front cover of your book and in this is an actual scene from it's a depiction of the characters in the Kariki Graf. We see the dog uh, Pinkies Quit uh, no, no, not Quit. Pinkies Oki and the twins and then the cart with all their belongings tracking through the Karoo. So, what is the Kariki Graf, the Kariki people? Sorry, I'm struggling a bit with this. So, right, Kariki means uh, it's kaper geskeer, the sheared sheep, and they also put up fences on farms. There, I got you a little picture, and this is the scissor that they use. So nowadays they use like electric shaving machines. The whole process has been mechanized. Um, but Kariki Bensa, these people on their donkey carts, was a very common sight during the 70s. I can remember when we went on holiday to the Cape, you would pass these people on the road. Now what they did was, they put all their meager belongings on top of the cart, and then they would move from farm to farm where they worked and then moved on. So they were track arbeiders, they, they were nomadic almost. They moved in the Karoo area from farm to farm where they were needed. Uh, while they were on the farms, they put up like a temporary shack to, uh, if, in which they could stay while they were working on the farm. Now this play starts with the death of Oma Mita. The death of Oma Mita, her funeral, is symbolic of the end of apartheid, the end of 
these people's lives as Kariki people. Pinkies convinces his siblings at after the funeral to move to Kualsberg uh, because he thought that there a lot of opportunities awaited them in the new South Africa. Now the characters in this play is of course Sarah, Sarah the anthropologist, anthropologist and here you can see an, an anthropology is a scientific study of humans, human behavior and societies in the past and present. So Sarah focused her studies on Kariki people and she obviously made a contribution when Fugard wrote this play. Now her alter ego, she's represented in the play by Sarah, but this, this is criticized by the critics because they feel that she is not needed in the play. She has a didactic, so a teaching role in the play. She informs the audience about the history and the culture of the Kariki people who are descendants of the Khoisan. The other characters are Quist's Quit Gedult, Omamita Sisien. Now, he killed his wife, Flora, and then he went to jail. He had these children, Pinkies with Laura, the oldest son, Tuk Tuk, who is mentally handicapped after an accident or injury he suffered when he was younger, and then the two young twins, Oki and Rockies. Oki's a boy, Rockies is a girl. Right, there's a photo of a typical shack that they would erect on a farm. I think this picture is a bit elaborate. I don't think they built such a big uh, shack. The development of the play, the verloop is chronologisch. In other words, it does not start at point A and ends with point Z. The play fluctuates between the present Flashbacks, Trachflitzer, and Sarah's didactic information, which she shares with the audience. And she also enters in dialogue with the characters. Right. So let's read. Background, this is now the stage. And what is on the stage, it's described in detail. So, achtergrond background, tenwoordige tijd, present tense. A ruimte wat die harde, sonder drinkte karoe uitbeeld. A setting that depicts the harsh, sun-drenched karoe. Dit is gespikkel met karoe bossies en rooie sandsteen klippe. So they will have on, the on stage a typical karoe setting, those little dry bushes and the red sandstone rocks of different sizes. Mees beduidend echter is hoe op grond wat pas gegrawe is en wat ooglopend daarop dui dat het een vast graf is. Most significant is a heap of soil that indicates a freshly dug grave. Um, right, vast graf, fresh grave, clearly is ooglopend. A aantal groot klippe is daarop geplaas. Um, a couple of big stones are placed on top of this grave. Now this is typical of the Khoisan people in the Karua. They dug shallow graves, not six foot graves, because the soil is so hard. Then they would put the body inside in the, the shallow grave and then on top they would place heavy stones so that the wild animals can't uh, get to the body. On die teenwoordgeskelde kant van die stage verhoog staan een donkie karrekie wat uitgespan is. Is a donkey cart 
that rested for the night. On een van die asse is een stuk touw vastgemaak gereed vir hem slaat. So, there is a rope that's ready if they were to depart. Rimslaat means is when they depart with the donkey cart. In the foreground, right, so prominently in front on stage is a conca met a swat dripwood pot boor op. Three-legged pot on top of the conca, which is a drum with fire. Daar is ook een verweerde blik trommel of twee met kleren kombase en ander persoonlijke besittings. There is also a couple of weathered uh, trunks, blankets and other personal belongings. Een groot plastic waterhouer, plastic water container, een verscheidenheid beskadigde en ingedijkte blikbekers en skottels. Uh, a few damaged and dented uh, enamel mugs and dishes and the enamel is chipped off here and there. Cutlery, rigs, touwe in ander track goed. On the kant van die karikies is aan bok aangedruk. So on the side they've squeezed in a um, uh, shambok. Skyns in die karikies staan a paar plate sink opgevoud as gooiing sak in felle plastic. There's also a corrugated iron sheets, hessian, and sheets of plastic. The corrugated iron sheets are used to build the shack, and the hessian and the plastic to um, is placed on the inside of the shack as some protection against the cold to insulate the shack a bit. Ever staan a geroeste hoenderok van draad, a rusted wire chicken coop. Now this is a picture I find found online of a rehearsal of this play. You can see the the water cans, the blankets, that is the donkey cart there, the karua bosses, the tall boss which we'll read about later. And there you can see some of the stones. Okay. Terwijl die gehoor binnenkom, sikkel rokkies met nog een grotere geklip. A rokkie is the, the female in the set of twins. She is struggling with a big stone and she's trying to put it on top. Carefully, voorzichtig is carefully, op die graf. Terwijl die gehoor binnenkom, while the audience enters. So there is already action on stage. Only rokkies is there. But as the audience enters to watch the play, I see Rockies uh, struggling with a stone and trying to place it carefully on the grave. Sy gevare aan haar klip, she notices another stone, maar dit is te swaar vir haar om alleen op te tel. So she notices another stone, but it's too heavy um, for her to pick up or to carry on her own. Oki, her brother, the twin brother, appears on stage. She knows how many clips are how she struggles with the stone and he then proceeds to help her and gaan help her. Saam dra hulle die clip na die graf. Together they carry the stone to the grave. Rokies gaan staan stil en veer traan weg. So she is very emotional about the death of Oma Mita. Oma Mita's death symbolizes the end of apartheid. It also symbolizes their struggle, the start of their struggle to find a new identity. So her death is the funeral of their existence as Kariki people. Rokies gaan staan stil in vier traan weg. She wipes a tear off her face. Na a paar minute gaan sit sy langs die graf. She goes and she sits next to the grave. Waarna sy gedachteloos uitstaar en weer eens a traan uit haar gezicht vee. So she just stares blankly in front of her and she wipes another tear off her face. Oki, her brother, 
hou aan om groot klippe by mekaar te maak en plaas dit op die graf. So he keeps on putting stones on the grave. Tuk tuk, the mentally handicapped brother, sluit by hom aan. Na a paar minute after a few minutes, waar tydens hulle klippe op die graf plaas, during which they put a few stones on the grave, sluit die twee seens by rockies aan, in haar stille waak langs die graf. In a quiet, it's almost like a wake. They stand and guard the grave. Lastens verskyn Pinkies. So he's the last character to appear on stage. He's the oldest sibling. He places, plaas, a paar groot klippe, wat vir die kleiner kinders te swaar was op die graf. So he places a few big rocks on the grave, which would be too heavy for the smaller children, younger children to carry. Hy sluit by sy broer en sister aan, he joins his brother and sisters, his brothers and sister, en gaan staan langs die graf, and he goes and he stands next to the grave. Hier is die toneel, wanneer die gehoor hulle sitplikke ingeneem het. This is the scene when the audience has finally taken their seats. So, very emotional, very charged. You can see that these people are sad. The lights are dimmed diagonally. Die lichte word oor kruis verdof en die toneelstuk begin. And the play starts. Pinkies acts here as the narrator. He scans the audience and then he starts talking to them. And he tells them what happened prior to Oma Mita's death. Pinkies kyk dier die gehoor en praat. Ons het daar in die gang langs die sekoe rivier gelee. We were in the passage, the narrow passage, next to the sekoe river. Toe kom die tyding, then the news came. Seer vermeelen, na seer, is short for monsieur, which is the French word for mister. This I they adopted from, I suppose, the French Huguenots, who also settled in the Cape. So they they didn't use the word mister or meneer, they used sieur. Vermeelen van Twyfelpoort. Twyfelpoort is the name of a farm and it's also symbolic. Doubtful entrance. Well, you can gather from that name that it was a doubtful entrance into a new way of life for these characters. So, Seer Vermeelen, the farmer, of Twyfelpoort, en let us know, dat ons moet kom inval, by die skeerhok op die plaas, we must come and join, the shave crew on the farm, maar die manne, I think, these manne refer to, other kariki people, who are also there, next to the sequoia rivier, wou niks weet nie, they didn't want to, hulle het gesê, die son gaan hulle vang, as hulle nou begin oppak, they said the sun will catch them if they start packing now to leave for the farm. Dat hulle nou kan deertrek, dat hulle nog kan deertrek met die paar rande in hulle sak. So, they can pull through. In other words, they can survive with a few rands in their pockets, with the little money they still had. So, they didn't see the need to go and work. So you can see these people do not seem to be very ambitious, the other people. Maar ek het geweet, but I knew. Oma sy kierie geld staan einde sy kant toe. Nou, kierie geld literally means kein money. So it's old age pension. And this is what they've used. This was the main source of income to, for survival. 
staan einde se kant toe, it's nearing its end. In other words, the, their oma, oma Mita, was going to die soon. En terwijl ek so staan en rondkijk, vang my oog die pot dun pap op die laaste paar houtkrimmels. And while I was standing there, looking around me, vang my oog, my eye caught the pot of thin porridge on the last crumbs of wood. So, he knew that their food was running out. And din pop is porridge. So that was their staple food. So as they, in, they had less and less money, they made the pop with more and more money. So it becomes like runny porridge, din pop. Vir weke nou het ons amper niks nat of droog om van te lewe nie. For weeks on end, we haven't had much wet or dry to live of. Nie die bieke din pap, only the little din pap that we had left, wat al dinner word, that's becoming thinner and thinner. En ek dink, nie, en loop maak ons donkies by mekaar. And I started gathering our donkeys. So he decided they were going to Twyfelpoort to go and shave sheep there so that they can earn a little income. I can not how good what Oma for my said on slot after Marag up the plastic carbon am afpak. I can remember well what Oma said to me late that afternoon when we started to unpack our belongings from the cart. For amper a week het sy niks gepraat nie. For almost a week she didn't say much. She just sat and stared into the, over the hills. Eers weer daar, op, by Twyfelpoort. Only there, when we reached Twyfelpoort, het oma sy tong losgekom. She started to talk. Ek het gesien sy het kwaai pijn. I saw that she had severe pijn. Die winterkoue was bitterlik. The winter cold was bitter. It was bitterly cold vir ons allemaal. Maar vooral vir oma. But especially vir oma. Sy het baie gelei. She suffered a lot. Altyd sikke stikkies flinkter lap om haar vingers was gedraai vir die rheumatiek. Oma suffered from rheumatism and rheumatism is normally much worse. The pain is normally much worse. Your joints are stiffer and ache more when it's cold. So this is like an old remedy. She tied pieces of torn cloth around her fingers to help with the pain. As ons nachts wakker skrip, dan hang die ijs aan die binnenkant van die huis, sy sinkdak. During the nights, when we wake up, we could see the ice hanging on the inside of the roof of the house, the shack. In die trekpad twyfelpoort toe was lang en swaar. And the journey in die trekpad Twyfelpoortu, the farm where they were going to work was long and heavy. Ek het self oma's a kort kiri life van die karikie afgetel. So, he carried oma off her short kiri body, in other words, a short little body. Um, he carried her off like a, like a baby of the cart. En vir die twee mannetjies aangesê om so lang vir haar a skuil te kie. En hy aangesê as I commanded them, I told them, to build her a skuil te kie, a shelter. Onder die dooringbos. Uh, to build her a shelter onder die dooringbos te loop maak. 
Dis in tyd het ek en Rokies die trommel stranks en trekgoed van die kar afgepak. Our belongings we up unloaded it from the cart. Toe het ek die sinke aan my kar begin timmer, I hammered the corrugated sheets together. Ons hockey, our little cage. I tried to uh, insulate it with plastic and gooing sak hesien. Toe ek vir oma in my arm stel, when I held oma in my arms, net voordat ek haar op die grond vou neersit, just before I wanted to put her down on the ground, to kyk sy my in die oor, she looked me in the eye, and she whispered quietly, en sy fluister so stilliekies, Pinkies, oma's nou in haar terugloop daar, my kind. Ek dink is die laaste maal, dat jy vir my so gaan stuif hou. She says, Oma is now reliving the past. Rumor has it that before you die, when you're old, you start living in the past more and more. It's like you are looking back at your life before you die. And I think this is the last month last time that you're going to hold me so tightly. Oma is gedaan. I'm finished, my kind. I'm tired of life. I'm tired. Klaar met die wereld. Finished with this world. Die tijd het gekom dat oma haar laaste bykie awesome moet uitblaas. Time has come for oma to draw her last breath. In Afrikaans we say the opposite to exile the last time. Maar gee oma jou woord, promise me, give me your word, my kind, dat jy sal kyk, dat wanneer jylle my bare, that when you put me away, euphemism, put me away instead of when you bury me. My voete hier op onse vastigheid, wat die goeie vader vir ons gegeet sal bly, that my feet will remain here, on the fastigheid, the steadiness of the earth that the good Lord gave to us. Want ons uit uit hierdie eindste aarde die lucht gesien, amal van ons, kariekie mense. Because we saw the first right, light when you were born from this earth. Amal van ons. Karikie mense. So they people from this earth, the karoe, we karikie people. In this waar ieder in elk gebare moet word. And that's where each and every one of us must be laid to rest. Where we must be put away, euphemism. Ek het daar probeer om my trane te slik. I tried hard to swallow my tears, weg te steek, to hide it. Maar oma het hulle gesien, but oma saw my tears. Kom, kom, my kind, moe nie droevig wees nie. Don't be sad. Bare die trane, put them away, swallow your tears. Daar achter jou oor, behind your eyes, for the coming drought and difficult times ahead, for the aankomende droogte en swaar tye wat voorlee. So she predicted that their lives will be difficult. Drought, typical of the karoo. And when it's dry and it doesn't rain, it makes life much worse. But the swaar tye refers to the hard times that was lying ahead for them. Sy het geweet, she knew. So paar nachte later maak iets my slaap wacht, wakker. So that is a colloquial way of saying you woke up, something woke your sleep. Okay, that's colloquial, it means you wake up. And daar sit rokies en snik. Rokies is sitting there and she's crying. 
Toe ek haar vraag wat my keer, when I asked her what was wrong, sê sy net, oma is weg, oma is gone. Toe ons daar die nacht loop le, het oma vir Rokies aangesê om haar vast te hou. When we went to bed loop le, go to sleep, het oma vir Rokies aangesê, she told her to hold her tightly. So met haar arm stuif om die kombuis gevou, so vir een bykie het, ek dink ek nou kombuis gelees in plaas van kombuis. Her arms, tightly around oma, who was wrapped in all her blankets, for a little bit of extra heat. En so het oma gesterwe, and that's how oma died. Met my hand het ek haar dove oor toegevee, I closed the dull eyes, lifeless eyes. Haar mond sag toegedruk, I closed her mouth gently. Oma se laaste asem was uit, oma has toegevee, Droon her last breath. Dit was valdag, die breik, to seerker Niels, twee van sy handlangers, help her stier om te kom help. Saam met ons die graf gegraaf, together we dug the grave. A ou gogo was ook by, an old lady was also there. Sy het ouma met a bykie lauw water afgewas, lukewarm water, She washed the body with lukewarm water. Now, this is the Khoisan uh, tradition. You wash the body, you put, dress the deceased in their clothes, of which they didn't have many. So, they put Oma's coat on, buttoned it up. Um, her eyes had to face the east, where the sun rises. And... All her belongings must be placed on top of her, with her in the grave. So the old gogo washed Oma's body with a bit of lukewarm water. Sy het Oma's jas weer vir haar aangetrek. She put her coat on en die kloop her vast gemaakt. She buttoned her coat. En haar stuif en haar paar kom berse toegedraai. En wrapped her tightly in her blankets. You'll remember from the poem Sarah Bartman last year that that's a tradition, you, uh, you wrap the person in, in a blanket. And to say daar in die grond le, met haar toe oor, wat kyk daar waar die son smorens opkom, the east. And while she was lying there with her eyes closed in the direction of the sunrise, it ek oma's a pipe, I put oma's pipe, Haar pakkie bokster twak tobacco en haar vieroukie boksie matches. Met snuif op haar borst neergesit. Haar snuif put it on her chest. Toe het seer Kerneels vir ons uit die skrif uitgelees. So the farmer read to them from the Bible. So een stikkie onthou ek goed. One section I remember well. Want daar het is jy gemaakt Stof is jy en jy sal weer stof word. Dis wie ons is. Van stof. Hierdie groot karoe. So, the farmer, sê ek kon Niels, red the typical scripture from the Bible. The scripture that's usually read at a funeral. Dust to dust, that section made from the dust and you will return to dust okay and then he says that touched him because they are from this dust this soil the great karoa as jy mooi kyk sal jy op a dag vir oma so sien dartel en dans en speel hier oor die vlakte soos die dwarlwind met a tolbos maak He says, if you look carefully, one day you will see Oma, her spirit, obviously, dart and dance and play over the open fields like the whirlwind plays with a tall boss. Now I showed you the tall boss on the, on, um, the photo. It's just like dry twigs 
uh, all interlinked and then it's it's like a ball and when the wind blows then it rolls like a ball Rokis onderbreek die stilte Rokis breaks the silence and she says Can ons dan nie iets vir oma saam sing nie? Can't we sing something for oma? Soos wanneer die brein predikant the colored reverend sondag vir groot kerk gekom het. So she, like the way the, the, the colored um, reverend who came on Sundays to the big church pinkies Ek weet hoe dit gaan. I know how it goes, the song. Sy begin sing. Lay by my heer terwijl die skadies daal. Abide by me. This hymn is often sung at funerals. If I remember, I'll put a clip for you. You will immediately recognize this song. Okie val saam met haar in, he starts joining her in singing. Oké in de rockies, laat nou die licht, that's the rest of the song. Ons levenspad beval, daar staan niks ander troos en hulp vir my. Toek, toek, that's the handicapped sibling, wat versteerd voorkom. He, he appears confused and disturbed by what's happening. Maak ook nou een paar geluide en een poging om saam te sing. He also attempts, he makes noises, sounds, in an attempt to join them. Okies, rockies and tuk tuk, they singing. Hope for your open loose, blij by my. Na afloop van die singerij, is daar a paar oomlikke stilte. So this is a poignant moment on stage. We see these marginalized Poor people at the site of the grave of their grandmother, uncertain about their future. Uh, it must be very emotional if you witness that on stage, this raw sorrow and emotion. And then this is suddenly interrupted by Tuk Tuk. He jumps up, he runs to the grave, and he starts throwing the, the stones off. Because this is too much for him. And probably in his handicapped mind, he doesn't understand this and doesn't want to accept that his Oma is gone. Dan beweeg Tuk Tuk skierlik en in a harwar. And a harwar is like chaotically, like a wild animal, he, like he's possessed. He moves towards the grave. Hy gooi vir voet klippe van die graf af. He throws, like a possessed person, he throws the stones off the grave. And he shouts, Nee, nee, ouma kan ons nie so los nie, ouma can't leave us like this. Pinkies tries and calms him down. Laat staan, toek, toek. Leave it, tuk tuk. Oma's now tot rusten. She rests now. As jy eers gebare is, in you are put away, kan jy nooit weer terugkom nie. You can't come back. Oma was klaar met die wereld, los aan nou. Sy was reg om te gaan. Oma was finished with this world. Leave her now. She was ready to go. Rokies gaan sit langs, tuk tuk en troos op. So she almost takes on this motherly role towards tuk tuk. She comforts him. Okie sluit by pinkies aan wat bezig is om hulle besittings by mekaar te maak en boop die karikie te pak. So, wow, Rokies is comforting tuk tuk. Uh, Okies and Pinkies are placing their belongings on top of the cart. But Tuk Tuk is not at all 
happy. He, 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 he hasn't calmed down. Laat ou maar terugkom, Rokies. Laat sy nog net eenmaal vir ons die story van die dwarrelwind vertel. Let her come back, Rokies. Let her just one time tell us that story about the whirlwind again. Foei, toek toek. Ons allemaal gaan vir ou maar baie mis. I'm sorry, I'm shame, tuk tuk. We all are going to miss Oma. Maar sy het self gesê, die lieve vader moet haar komvat. She said herself, the good Lord must come and take her. It is better so, it's better that way. Oma kon nie meer nie. Oma kon nie anymore. She could not survive any longer. Life was just too hard. As you will, if you want, dan vertel ek jou die story wat oma altyd saans vir ons daar rondom die vier vertel het. So, she says, if you want, I will tell you the story that oma always told us next to the fire. Wat sê jy, Tuk Tuk? How about that, Tuk Tuk? Tuk Tuk veer die trane en stof uit sy gezig. He wipes the tears and the dust from his face. So you can imagine him taking his sleeve and wiping his, tra- wiping his face clean. Hy probeer sy best om saamhangen te praat. He tries his best to speak coherently. Ja, die een van die nachtuil, the one about the night owl, wat om vervies het, came angry vir die som, came angry with the sun, daar boe, the sun above. Rokkie skar is aan, en toe stier hy a dwarrelwind, whirlwind, daar door van boe af, from way up above, en hy kom veer die kole en die as, hier onder die konka uit, en hy comes and he wipes the coals and the ash from underneath the konka, the fire. Toek toek carries on and he says, die uil sê vir die kole, hulle moet die sterre daar boe in die himmel word, and the uil says to the coals, they must become the stars in the heaven, en die as, the ashes, hulle moet die melk wegwees, they must be the milky way. Ja, so dat daar genoeg licht is, so that there be enough light, so dat mense in die nacht kan sien waar jy loop, en die son achter, mm, loop, en toe, excuse, en toe, sorry about this, en toe die son achterkom, waar die eil aangevang het, raas hy hard. Ja, so, and then Rocky carries on, and she says, yes, the ashes and the coals had to become the light and the milky way, and then there would be enough light, says Rocky, so that mense in die nacht kan sien, waar hulle loop, so that one can see in the night where you walk. And when the sun achterkom realized what the owl did, he shouted loudly. Wie het nou die ganse licht vol kole en as gegooi? Who threw coals and ash into the sky, entire sky? Dit was ek, sê die uil. Sien jy dan nie wat jy nou aangevang het nie? It was me sê die uil, sês die uil. Don't you realize what you did? Vra die son. Nog gaan mense in die naag vir kwaad geld wil rondloop. So people are going to walk around at night and they'll be up to, vir kwaad geld, up to no good. En hulle gaan moeilikheid maak. And they'll cause problems, cause trouble. So Tuk Tuk is now calmed down. She um, distracted him with her story. 
Toek toek rok stilliekies aan die gichel, he giggles quietly. Rocky vier die laaste traan oor sy wang. So she wipes the last tear off his cheek. So ja, dis beter, dis is much better. Oma had daar die story in jou hart gesit. Oma put that story in jou hart. Hy sal het altyd met jou dra. Nes oma altyd saam met jou sal wees, tot die dag dat jy sterwe. You will carry that story with you. Just like oma will be with you always, until the day you die. Rocky is hou aan om vir toek toek te troos. She carries on comforting him, terwyl die eindag na oukie en pinkies verskuif. So, the focus on stage is moved to oukie en pinkies. So, oukie as pinkies, wat nou, wat nou? Terug seekoe hier vierbrug toe. Are we going back to the bridge at the seekoe river? Um... Pink is, is besluiteloos, he can't make a decision. On sal see. We'll see. And then suddenly he says, Nee, tell me dit. To hell with this. Ek is moog van hier sit. Dag in, en dag uit, en kyk hoe jy en Rockies en toek toek met dun papette om van te leef. I'm tired of this way of living. I'm tired of watching day in and day out how you and Rockies en toek toek only a thin porridge to live of. Terwyl ons daar leen wacht vir een seer, een fame, om voorbij te kom en prijs vast te maak. Um, and, and we'll sit there and we'll eat and wait, we'll eat thin porridge and we'll wait for a farmer to come past and fix a price with us so that we can scrape together a few rands. Terwijl ons daar alleen wacht vir seer om voorbij te kom en prijs vast te maak, so dat ons een paar rand by mekaar kan skraap. Skryp a few rands together, sorry this thing has moved. Om maar net weer al ons goed by mekaar te kry, op te pak en vir nog 20 mijl aan te sakkel. Ja, yeah, and then we have to gather our things again and struggle along for another 20 miles. For what? For what? And now he's suddenly determined. I corner. Ek soek nie meer hierdie lewe van rondtrek op die stofpaie nie. I don't want this life anymore. On the dirt ro- roads, moving around. On the dirt roads from farm to farm. Okay, says. Ma, waar na toe sal ons dan? Where will we go? Door toe, Kwilsberg, Plakkerskamp toe, to the squatter camp. Ach, uh, Tomati Straat. Now, Tomati Straat is the idiomatic expression in Afrikaans. It indicates that you are in serious trouble. Tomati Straat. As iemand sê, ek is in Tomati Straat, it means I'm in trouble. Ok, it's, it's now... The, the excitement is infectious. And he says, Hy roep na rokies en toektoek, Het jylle gehoor? Ons karikie daar is getel, Al karikie daar is al over. Pinkies vat ons door toe, Dalk de maatie straat toe, Daar achter die cash and carry, Wat sê jylle van a posie in de maatie straat? What, what do you say about a posie in de maatie straat? Rocky's verskyn op die toernie, Rocky joins the scene. Maar wat dan van pa? What about dad? Now dad is quit, who went to jail because he killed his wife in a drunken rage. Reeds, exactly. Dan kan ons pa sommer elke dag sien. We can see him every day. En jy kan skoolhoop daar in Lowryville. 
en jy kan school loop, go to school. Ja, want oma het altyd gesê dat ek geleerendheid moet kry. So, <coughs> geleerendheid, die correct woord is geleerdheid. So, this is quite uh, ironic, because she can't get the word for education right. En ek, ek kan daar dis kan die tronk, daar teen die groot pad loop sit, en kyk hoe die groot trokke voorbij kom. En ookie sê, and I can go and sit on the other side of the jail where their father is. There next to the big road, the highway, and look at the big trucks driving past. Opgewonde oor die moendlike trek na Tematiestraat begin rokies en oukies sachies sing, terwyl hulle pinkies help om die karikie te laai. So they all very excited about this possible move to Tematiestraat. And rokies en oukies start singing while they help pinkies pack the cart. Daar kom my hoene aan, hy het bloemer aan, wat sal hy aan hoener sê? Ok, it's a silly little Afrikaans song about <clears throat> um, a rooster who's wearing a granny panties. And then it says, what would the other chicken say about it? Die toe het nie al eindig met al vier kinders boop die karikie. The scene ends with all four children on the cart. Now, if you look at this PowerPoint here, you will see the play, a play, any play consists of acts or one act, uh, which is divided into scenes. And after scenes, there's either a change of scenery, sort of the, the, the play moves on in time to another setting, and it's normally indicated by the dimming of lights that the scene has come to an end, the use of music, the change of lighting, etc. Okay, that is then the end of page 14 to 18. Um, yeah, there, you can now follow the reading of Mrs. Clay which is posted on Teens.